fam and welcome back to the mini series. I will be talking about Bala Kamon today, a simple anime that has a heartfelt story that was aired in summer 2014, so not relatively new. It originally started as a web manga before being animated by uh, Kinema Citrus. What was it? Cinema Citrus. You never know the K's and C's. It's both subbed and dubbed by Funimation. Though personally, I I think it's better as a sub as the voice characters work well with some of the music that flows throughout the anime. It keeps the story light in most parts. This especially happens with more of the heartfelt scenes. With Barakamon, it's about a man named Seshu Handa, a talented cr- cr- oh, excuse me. A talented calligrapher who is handsome, young, and completely narcissistic. Due to this nature, when a veteran judge calls his award-winning work unoriginal, he overreacts and punches the elderly man with a ca- who has a cane. Therefore, his father pushed him to live to the Goto Islands in Japan as punishment and to help him in self-reflection of his actions. Where his the lifestyle is completely different to the city of Tokyo, uh, Seshu needs to find new inspiration and develop his own unique art style. While while children, middle schoolers, and an energetic old man keep coming to his home, he only wants to work while his crazy neighbors have no sense of minding their own business. This leads him to learn things that he never would have. Though I will try and avoid the spoilers of the series, Seshu is not only the own main character, as Miss Naru Koto Ishii, a young elementary schooler who stays around Seshu and originally made his home her base of operations with her two uh, middle school friends, Miwa Yamamura and Tamiko Arai, along with her best friend, Hina Kubota who I'm going to say is the most adorable, shy child ever. Unlike her friends, we see more of Naru and her, and her character developing to become more attached to Seishu in a way where I see her becoming more like his little sister. Nearer the end, Seishu becomes closer to the feelings that, although he remains impulsive like he did at the beginning by punching the old man he then becomes more endearing and almost he's developing in a way it's like a teenager would even though he's a full grown man he's developing quite childish actions because he has spent his life through calligraphy he even though, as I said, no spoilers to how it all ends, though, he does become closer to all the characters while the help of the people, while helping the people of Gota Island with Naru's help. Now we'll go on to the animation. It's quite modern, um, typical of any anime that you see around today, and it does have a nice flow to it with all the colours. Because quite a lot of animes, you've got bright hairstyles, bright clothes, everything. I would say it's not muted, but it's more natural in colours. Even the colour of the sea, it's got that little green tinge to it instead of the bright blue, which you see in a lot of other animes. I think it's it fills a gap in what the genre is looking for, because it is based as a slice of life comedic style on a anime it, it also means adults can watch this with great ease it's also in the HD so the lines of the screen are clean making it really nice to watch because honestly nothing's worse than when you're seeing pixelated lines on the screen you don't know if something's wrong with your own screen or the thing's just completely blurred <laughs> the colours are Excuse me, while I take a sip. As an overall thing, I just say it's something enjoyable to watch as an anime as a whole. 
um, going from scene to scene, nothing's too jagged, it keeps a very nice plot line, as I've explained before. Going on to the music, as for the opening, uh, we have scenes of Seshu and Naru mainly, because they're the main protagonists. Uh, the music is positive, and something you would not nod your head to. With the, with the lyrics, you wouldn't really remember them. Um, I sh no offence to those who probably memorise anime music. It's just one of those ones which you wouldn't immediately think it's about to come on. But it's nice, and it's... It, the the tune itself is complex in a way where it goes well with the actual opening of the episode itself because I find with a lot of anime openings they don't they don't feel like they could be easily adapted to every episode whilst this one with how Seshu develops with Naru's boisterous um, personality I feel like that's um with each episode the the opening becomes more linked to the episode itself and you sort of see him once you learn more you see the opening develop in a way if you know what I mean Yeah, this is unique to me when it comes to anime as an opening, and the ending music is usually separate stories to to themselves. As you, the ending music is absolutely beautiful. I mean, by just the scenes themselves with this water color, just niceness, which goes well with the calligraphy. I would say, if you've ever seen the artwork of some, um, in, if you've ever seen the artwork of Japan, there are some. Beautiful, I mean, some beautiful wall paintings which have got calligraphy and artwork, and that's what you get as a sort of a sense from when you're watching the ending credits. Um, the music itself is like a soft rock, so really upbeat, but not so soft that it becomes light. It's 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 a hard way to explain it, but I quite enjoy it myself and. Honestly, makes me smile whenever I listen to it. So, you don't really need it to be completely complex or over the top. Sometimes music is just good music, and for the opening and the ending music in this, it's just good music. Overall, you don't need an anime that has several twists or strangeness happening to make it a good anime. This anime is all about the simplicities of life outside the city and how someone can grow within that lifestyle. It's a great lesson for anyone to watch, uh, although this anime is actually aimed for teenagers. I think uh, anyone who would want to watch something different to the current sliced life comedic range, this fills a gap, I would say. The audio and the animation aren't terrible, but they're not terribly unique. So it's still an anime in its way, but I can say, uh, but it's not like it has a style then which you'd go back and rewatch it all over again. It's a very one watchable anime. That's how I feel about it. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to. Let's see some more of my videos. I'm um, coming up with some more gaming videos that will be coming on Saturdays. And for, of course, the ending, uh, my scores. I gave the plot of this uh, Balakamon 8 out of 10, the animation 7 out of 10. Characters, 7 out of 10, they weren't terribly unique, you could see them in most generic animes, in all honesty. Audio soundtrack, 7 out of 10, there wasn't anything particularly unique, just it was good, but it wasn't average. When you see an average anime, you just know you, you can give it a 5 then. But in terms of the audio soundtrack on this, the dubbing and the subbing were pretty good. D 
decent quality. There was no pops or anything. So it worked well with what it needed. Excuse me. And finally, the overall rating, I will give 7 out of 10. I know that's kind of low, considering my anime list gave it 8.45 out of 10. But when it comes to me liking what I watch, Barakamon isn't a particularly memorable anime. I've... I've mixed up with Bakugan before because I think it because of the title alone. So it's a decent anime. I would recommend you to watch it if you just want something light-hearted and just a bit of fun. But I would say I'm not. I don't expect like a season two, especially since it was 2014, or a rendition like they've done with Fruits Basket. It's it's been done and I would say just check it out for yourself and leave a comment below as to what if you've watched it or you want to watch it. I will see you later on. Bye bye. <laughs>